Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani. In our previous videos, we discussed first order, second order bands. And today, this is the last topic of the series in which we will discuss third order bands, which we used to give when we were using standard edgewise brackets. So what are third order bands? Let's begin. Here I am showing you Andrew's six keys to occlusion because the third key which is about the crown inclination or labiolingual or buccolingual inclination of the teeth, this key is directly related with the third order bands. According to this key, anterior teeth or incisors in a normal occlusion should be at sufficient angulation so that they can prevent over eruption. Confused? Let me explain. If you see this occlusion is an ideal occlusion and I am not going to discuss the other features of this occlusion but look at the incisor relationship. There is normal overjet and normal overbite. If you measure the angulation between upper and lower incisors on a cephalometric radiograph, the normal value is 125 to 135 degrees. We call that interincisal angle. Now in some cases like class 2 division 1, this angulation is disturbed and there is excessive proclination of upper incisor which results in excessive overjet. Here you can see that lower incisors are free to erupt till they come in contact with the lingual surface of the upper incisors. Now this will result in excessive overbite as well. And sometimes this angulation is so much disturbed that lower incisor over erupt and comes in contact with the hard palate and that causes very impinging overbite. Same is the case with class 2 division 2 in which upper incisors are retrocline. And in that case, again lower incisors do not find any stop and they over erupt. That also results in deep impinging overbite, which is sometimes traumatic. In both of these cases, the curve of SP is exaggerated. And if you want to correct the deep overbite, it is necessary to flatten this curve of SP or occlusal plane. And that is the sixth key given by Andrews in his six keys to occlusion. Now let me remind you here that Andrews in his research did not use cephalometric radiograph. So he did not measure the interincisal angle. In fact, he just took impressions of 120 patients with normal or ideal occlusion and measured the labiolingual inclination of all the dentition. How did he do that? Here if you want to check or measure the labiolingual inclination of lateral incisors in upper arch, you will have to draw an occlusal plane and draw a perpendicular line to that occlusal plane and then draw a tangent line to the labial surface of the lateral incisor to check the labiolingual inclination of this tooth. The angle between this tangent line and the perpendicular line was around 3 degrees and here you can say that upper lateral incisor has plus 3 degree torque value. Why are we calling this positive torque if the gingival portion of this tangent line is lingual as compared to the incisal portion of this tangent line, we call it positive torque and the labial surface of the upper lateral incisor has positive 3 degree torque. If you want to measure the inclination of the labial surface of upper central incisor, it has more torque value approximately around 7 degrees. Now you should also understand that what is negative torque then? In class 2 division 2, when the upper incisors are retrocline, you can appreciate that the gingival portion of this tangent line is now labial as compared to the incisal portion of this tangent line. All four incisors in upper arch are the only teeth having positive torque. Rest of the dentition have negative torque. Now what about the torque values of canines? To measure the inclination of the labial surface of upper and lower canines, you will have to draw again the occlusal plane and draw perpendicular lines to that occlusal plane. Now draw tangent to the labial surface of these canines. The angulation between the perpendicular line and the tangent line is minus 7 degrees for upper canines and minus 11 degrees for lower canine. As we move further backwards, 
The first premolar in upper arch has the same negative torque value. However, the torque value in lower arch has increased. If you go further backwards, the torque value in lower arch is increasing progressively. However, the torque value is not very changed in upper arch. That is what Andrews has mentioned that just upper four incisors have positive torque, rest of the teeth have negative torque values. And in lower arch, negative torque values increase progressively as you go backward from incisor till second molar. Just give it a read, now it will be comparatively easier for you to understand. By now it must be clear that all the teeth have different torque values. But standard edgewise brackets are same for all the teeth. So if a patient comes to you with an ideal occlusion and you fix a standard edgewise bracket on his teeth, what is going to happen? For example, if you have given a standard edgewise bracket on his central incisor and after a series of wire when you reach the heaviest rectangular wire, this wire will not go into the slot passively. You will have to push this wire into the slot and the wire will become active. And because of the force application by this wire, it will move the root labially. In other words, the torque value has been changed from normal to retroclination in this incisor just because that this bracket was not made specifically for this tooth. Same thing will happen with all the teeth. Now consider the example of lower molar. As I mentioned that the lower molar has around minus 30 degree torque value. If you are giving a standard edgewise bracket on this tooth, that bracket slot is facing a bit upwards. When you will insert a straight rectangular wire at the stage of finishing in this kind of bracket system, the wire will not go initially into the bracket slot and you will push this wire. Now this wire is active and because of the springiness present in the wire material, it will move the crown of the tooth buccally. So in this way, the normal torque values of all the teeth are changing just because these standard edgewise brackets are not made in accordance with the labiolingual inclination of the dentition. So what was the solution when you were using standard edgewise brackets? The solution was to give torque or twist in the rectangular heavy wire which you are giving at the finishing stage of treatment. Now just assume that you have given minus 30 degree torque in the wire segment which will go into this molar and because of that twist the wire will not apply any force and it will not change the torque value of this tooth. So with standard edgewise brackets you had to give twists in wires for each tooth and these twists or torques in the wire were known as third order bands. According to the definition, these are the twist or torque given in the finishing wires at the stage of finishing to compensate the variation in the buccolingual intonation of the teeth. But now you can imagine that how much tedious the work was. It was not easy at all to produce perfect twists or torque in the arch wire to get an ideal buccolingual inclination of the teeth. So was there any other option? Yes, the other option is to use straight wire appliance or contemporary edgewise instead of the standard edgewise bracket. So it was the need of time to invent this kind of appliance. On my left hand side it is a standard edgewise bracket with zero degree torque and on my right hand side this is a straight wire appliance or contemporary edgewise bracket. I have shown this bracket for lower first molar given 30 degree torque within the bracket base. Now instead of using a standard edgewise bracket if you bond contemporary edgewise bracket on this molar. Now you will appreciate that heavy rectangular wire will go straight into the slot without applying any kind of unwanted force. In this way the wire can go straight without any need of third order bands. So how you have compensated third order bands in contemporary edgewise brackets? In contemporary edgewise bracket bracket slots are inclined to compensate variation in the buccolingual inclination of labial surfaces of the teeth. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर लिसनिंग आई होप दैट आई हैव क्लियर्ड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑल थ्री काइंड ऑफ बैंड इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरीज यू कैन कमेंट एंड आस्क एंड आई विल ट्राई टू रिप्लाई यू एंड क्लियर इट मोर फॉर यू स्टे ट्यून फॉर अदर टॉपिक्स थैंक यू